Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Salt of the Earth. Uh, so we have just settled in Cascade Hills, and now the first thing I want to do is claim my outposts. I actually have slots for seven different outposts here uh, that I can, you know, sort of choose from uh, on the map. I think the first one I want to target is the Leeds Concrete Silos. It's a landmark outpost here, and it's going to eliminate my... Uh, uh, my materials cost. So right now, the only costs, ongoing costs that I have are meds and materials. So the first order of business is going to be to cover those costs with outposts. And then after that, really, it's mostly, I think, ammo and fuel that I need on an ongoing basis, maybe a little bit of meds. Uh, so I'll probably go out and try to grab those. But actually, before I do any of that, I just remembered, we're here on the base screen. I've already gotten rid of my staging area uh, because I knew I could claim that landmark outpost. So I want to do, uh, what I want to do here is build... The Haven device. So I can't actually leave the base while I'm building the Haven device because I actually need to fight off the siege that shows up. Everything's gotta start somewhere. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna have a siege soon. So I've got Jaden the Millennial here as my follower. Uh, so during this siege, I'm gonna try to grab as many zombies as I can so that Jaden can kill them and I can get credit for the bounty that I've got queued up. So I guess we'll just hang out out here. Figure a bunch of zombies are going to charge us. Plague samples. Don't worry, I'm on it. Right, Jaden and I are ready. Let's do this. <gasps> There's a zombie. All right. Wait a minute. Did that count? Yes, it did. Cool. There we go. So if you don't know, the right trigger when you're not aiming a weapon is a grapple button. And if you have a partner and you grab a zombie, the partner will attack the zombie and kill it. So that's what I'm trying to do to get this bounty. Oh crap. No, no, no. Oh, hey, nice sniping, somebody. Oh, here's somebody else. You can also grab... you. In order to grapple a zombie, you typically need to either be behind them or they need to be on the ground. And you can do it in both of those cases. Uh, if you've got the powerhouse skill, I believe that that allows... Whoa! Nope. I believe that that allows you to grab them from any angle. There we go. We did it. Hey, Jaden. Oh. You busy, buddy? Hey, Jaden. Uh, you don't need to be my follower anymore. We Whoa! Whoa, he was serious about not being my follower anymore. Holy crap. He just vanished. That was weird. Haha. <laughs> Stay out there. Man, I am having such a hard time forgetting the dying light controls. I keep trying to, like, jump using RB, attack using RT, and then as soon as I play a little bit of this game, I'm going to go back and, oh, gosh, okay, and try to dodge with B oh, in dying light, which also doesn't work. Let's um, get away from the freaking juggernaut. Hi, guys. Okay, you're blocking my door. That's not helpful. Hey, stay away from my wizard van, buddy. That's mine. It's my favorite. Alright. I'm just gonna close that door. Give myself... Oh, I've already reloaded. Okay, I thought I needed time to reload. Oh, hi, buddy! This character's not that great at reloading. There we go. So this weapon has got a break on it. Which makes it better at doing damage to juggernauts. Stop messing with my favorite vehicle, you jerk. Oh, gosh. Hello. Let's just get out of the way here. How close is the Haven device? I mean, okay, we're real close. 
All right, Haven device is on. Nice. Come on, Jug. You can do it. Die. There you go. Nice. All right, Haven device is installed. That means there's no more sieges, no more distractions. Everything's gonna be good. And I am almost there on my bounties too. I'm almost ready to go back to the bounty broker. Let's just pick up all these plague samples. All right, so anyway, what was I gonna do? I was gonna go claim some outposts. So this is the first one I wanted to grab. So we can head down in that direction. Let me replenish my ammunition. So I'm, because I'm not sure exactly which um, places I want to grab, I am over preparing because I, I'm anticipating that at some point I may want to, uh, to kill a Plague Heart in order to free up an outpost that I like. Oh, right, I've got no room for Plague Samples because I just filled my inventory with useful items. So I could bring the Vandito. I definitely want to fix up. Let me fix up the wizard van. Okay, let me catch up with the chat too, because I was in the middle of a fight and uh, couldn't really read what was going on. Um, oh, why do I have this? Let's stick that in there. Let's also stick, well, yeah, that's good. I think I'll take the wizard van for spin just because I love it. So, La Coalition is suggesting, because I um, was complaining about uh, the differences between the controls in Dying Light 2 and State of Decay 2, um, Coalition was saying, well, I can, you know, I do have uh, the ability to modify my controls. I could just make the controls in State of Decay 2 like those in Dying Light 2. I'm actually not sure how well that would work, uh, because one big consideration, both of those games have buttons that you push together. Uh, they have corded inputs. And so which buttons are easy to put to, to, to push at the same time is actually kind of a big consideration. I'm not sure how well the Dying Light 2 controls would actually apply to State of Decay 2. Okay, so let's claim this outpost. So the Leeds Concrete Silos, I believe that one thing they can do is, let's see here. Yeah. So I can either spend parts, labor, or influence. I don't think I'm going to need a lot of labor. So let's spend labor. But basically what this gives me is free materials upkeep. So now, I, I, actually, I think it might take a second to kick in. So I don't know if we'll see it yet. Yeah, so once it kicks in, those that my materials income won't be negative two anymore. It'll just be zero. Which means I can even make it positive if I want to. Uh, though I don't think that's really necessary. Um, so, okay. So, that's one slot used. I've got seven total. The other thing I want to make sure I cover is meds. So, I, I, I've forgotten. Actually, oh, I know a place that's definitely got a, a pharmacy. I think it's like over here someplace. No, it's over here. Yeah. So, right next to the church, there's a pharmacy. Uh, th actually, that might be the house. That might be the house, and that might be the pharmacy, or maybe vice versa. I forgot. Either way, I definitely want a pharmacy. So let's go claim a pharmacy. So uh, Coalition has asked me if I've ever tried to use a bloater gas grenade with a flare uh, to set it on fire. And uh, no, I don't think I have. And you're right that I believe this community might very well have what it takes um, to build it. Something has gone terribly wrong with the path here. I'm hoping that the latest version of Cascade Hills, which has been tweaked, might have caught that. Uh, if not, I might need to bug it. All right, so I'm headed up to grab the pharmacy, and then once I've once I've got meds covered, it's just kind of you know arbitrary what are the resources I want to have. I mean, I think I tend to really focus a lot on on ammo as a resource. Uh, just because I like to be able to fire like crazy and set off a bunch of bombs and not have it cost me anything. 
Oh, hey, Gordus, thanks for joining us. And uh, Gordus is uh, is consoling me on um, the loss of my character Modina from a couple of episodes ago. Yeah, I, I still am feeling the regret from that. It's it's hard to lose a character you've had that long. I'm actually kind of glad that uh, Jade and the Millennial was able to complete that bounty during the siege, because I was actually nervous about taking him out, because I really like Jade too. I haven't had him as long as Medina, but um, he's such a bad character, but a fun bad character, that <laughs> I would I would feel sorry to, to lose him. Uh, it's weird to be playing on um, Dread again and just not be as worried about zombies as I typically am in Nightmare. Okay, good. I did. I did get the pharmacy. So, or what is it? Was it a pharmacy? Is this, is this like a vet clinic? It's it's something. Oh, it looks like I drove far enough that I've completed my uh, third bounty. So I should definitely, while I'm in this neighborhood, hit up the bounty broker. Let's just poke around in all the rooms. No zombies inside, because there's never any zombies inside. And we're good. All right, claim this outpost. So this is going to be a meds outpost. Another outpost up and running. But in my opinion, it still has a ton of untapped potential. You're right, it does have a ton of untapped potential. Let's tap into some of that potential. Let's immediately upgrade this meds outpost. So I have got way too many materials and you can't see it here but yeah i've got way too many materials I've got 115 materials i need to start spending them on something so i'm gonna be upgrading my outposts as fast as i can uh to to try to take advantage of that i don't have enough because we cap how much influence you can take with you as you're leaving a map um i don't have enough influence to max out all my outposts but i can at least make a profit on meds and then we can head out and do something else. So I do tend to like to spread out my outposts so that I've got a nice drop off point in every neighborhood. So I don't think I'm going to try to grab another site that is near here, but I should head over to the bounty broker and I can swap out my bounties and start making progress on something else. Uh, I've lost track of where I was going. Bounty Broker. That's right. Up this hill, if I remember. It's actually been a really long time since I played in Cascade Hills. I don't have my usual sort of working knowledge of the layout. I have to think about it a little more to remember where to go. I've just spent so much time in Trumbull Valley lately. And before then, I was spending a lot of time in Providence Ridge and Meager Valley. I don't know when the last time I was in Cascade Hills is. It, it couldn't have been that long ago. But yeah, let's talk to Cash. Alright, so let's collect the Biker Vest, which I think I already have. Um, the Restored Echo S7 Assault Rifle. And the Improvised Weapon Station. Yes, this is what I was looking for. I, I don't think this community has the improvised we weapon station yet, and I think that they should. So, okay, so recruiting a survivor, destroying plague hearts with explosives. Okay, I should keep that in mind. And allying with enclaves. Okay, so, actually, there's a survivor activity mission over here that might very well lead to a recruitable enclave. Let's keep that in mind. I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but when I come back home, that might be worth pursuing. Um, okay, so what other outpost should I grab? So I think, isn't there a... Okay, yeah, there's an ammo outpost right here. And that's over in the sort of starter area, which I don't I don't have an outpost there yet, so that seems worthwhile. Oh, one thing I should definitely do is have some coffee. Keep this character going, then I can pick up some plague samples and go. Oh, so Cogs wants me to go over the skills I have in this community in case I lose somebody else so we can keep track. So I've got a pathologist, which is a kind of med medicine person, um, engineer, gardening, hacking, munitions, gut packing, metalwork, electronics, and auto mechanics. So I think metalwork and engineering are related. Electronics, let's see here, do I have another? We're pretty spread out, 
actually, which is which is kind of oh no, engineer no, it was engineering and auto mechanics that are both advancements of mechanics. So I definitely don't need another mechanic. I could afford to get another of practically anything else because there's enough specialties left over. So there you go. There's there's your record of my skills, Cogs. Okay. So I'm going to try to get out of this terrain, which is really bad for a uh, wizard van. And try to remember... So wait, which way am I going? I want to go and turn right. Okay. For some reason, I've always found it difficult to navigate Cascade Hills. I get turned around a lot and forget which direction I need to drive to get to an ultimate destination. Cog suggests that uh, a character with metalworking should be able to um, repair broken melee weapons in the field. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I had not, I had not uh, considered that. That's a, that's a, that's a good thought. Worth suggesting on the support side, honestly. Let's see. Okay, so so for a lot of players. You know, who uh, at launch like this area up here was the very first place they ever they ever settled. Though actually, I think originally the very first time we implemented an early tutorial mission, I actually implemented it around the church. Um, I don't think we had yet fully established this place as being the starter uh, area of Cascade Hills. But I think it was sort of uh, originally this house was actually in a different place. I think it was like up on up on the hill over here, but it was so such an inconvenient location for players to get down and up from uh, early on in the game when they're only on foot and they don't really have a car, that we moved it downhill to be closer to a lot of the other um, sort of places where you can scavenge. Um, and so originally, when I was first implementing the, the initial draft of our early missions, uh, which ended up not being used, we did a completely different ones eventually, I, I, I set them over here. I had, you know, the, the player starting at the, at the church, uh, which is, you know, another sort of uh, fairly small area and then just had them sort of wandering around in this much denser area with a lot of stuff to do but yeah eventually we ended up sort of making this into our you know, it's not quite like the firewatch fortress area in uh uh in providence ridge but it's close it's about as close as we could get because this corner it's got a little bit of everything but it's all very close together and it's kind of forbidding to sort of go much further on foot and so you feel like sort of you're in a starter area until you're ready to break out of it I think we did a better job of that with Providence Ridge because we, we went into designing that map specifically with that experience in mind. And so we were able to do more to make that starter area feel like an appropriate starter area than we did in Cascade Hills, which we built just to sort of be a general map without even really thinking about the tutorial until much later. Awesome. Right. So I just realized I should probably claim this as an outpost first. Okay, wait, can I claim this? Yes, okay. I should claim this as an outpost first. So that I can drop things off in it. Like this and that. And so now that we have the improvised weapon station. Actually, let me carry less of this too. Now that we have the improvised weapon station. Um, I kind of want to install it somewhere uh, in the base. So let me. I should have a look at my options there. Once I'm done dropping all this crap off. Let's just say I don't need to carry all those shells around. Um, grab some grenades. Well, actually, let's hold on to those grenades. I might use those grenades. Um, so, yeah, let's look at the base. What do I have installed in each of these little places here? Um, this is the fireworks crafting station, which can be put anywhere. Let's actually... I think that the armory... It makes more sense for the armory to have the improvised weapon station that I just turned in. So let's... There it is. Let's install that. And let's find a different spot. Oh, the filling station I do really like. Um, oh, yeah. No, that's good, too. Okay. Okay. Here's like a boring secure case. Whatever. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I can... Oh, I can still upgrade this kitchen. Okay. I'm going to install a new mod in that kitchen in just a sec. But... Yay, coffee. All right. Let's turn that in, actually. I don't need it. 
And let's drop our rucksack in the car. Now, what is next? I should go to a completely different area. Do I want one up here? I mean, there's not that much to do up here. I should definitely have one up in this corner. Let's go up here and see what's there. And actually, I might have to take out this play card. Let's go up there and see what's, see what's possible. Kind of a long drive. Cogs asks, uh, what's the story behind the metal horse thing in Ferrisboro? I don't actually know what you're talking about. So, sorry. Get away. I think it, okay, if it's the kind of thing I'm thinking of, I, I believe that there's this sort of tradition of like, um, oh, this thing, the big donkey, right. So there's just a tradition in a lot of sort of rural places in the United States to just build weird roadside, roadside attractions. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of parts of the United States that have like big, long highways, uh, big, long, boring highways and a lot of very small towns, uh, particularly in places where there's a lot of, you know, rural areas, farming going on, or just inhospitable areas, desert areas, that sort of thing. Um, and in those places, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, part of the survival of a town is getting people to stop their cars, getting people to not treat, you know, the town like flyover territory, get them to actually slow down, stop, get gas there, get lunch there. And so one of the things they'll do is they'll build weird stuff on the side of the road that people want to look closer at. Um, and so, you know, you'll have these big, like, fiberglass muffler men. You'll have uh, big, huge fiberglass dinosaurs. You'll have, you know, things like that, that donkey sculpture. A lot of that stuff is there to just sort of catch the eye of potential tourists and bring them in. And so, yeah, so I think that the artists uh, on this game, particularly Doug Williams is really into this kind of stuff, uh, you know, really have a, lot, a, a fondness for sort of the, the aesthetics of rural America and really wanted to sort of grab some of those visual touchstones and make sure they showed up in the game so you could really sort of, if you're somebody who's gotta be a plague hard around here. got a lot of sort of fond memories or good feelings about that world, you can sort of recognize it in, uh, in this game. Uh-oh. Like right Strangers under siege? Who are these people? Oh, wait, they're kind of far away from me. Okay, I've got an hour to deal with that, so let's just not worry about it. Instead, oh, that ki oh that enclave is called the Ring Bearers. Why did why did I choose that choose that name? Or maybe Andy came up with that one. I have no memory of why we would have chosen the Ring Bearers as uh, as a, as an enclave name. Seems like a Lord of the Rings reference, but it could also just be a wedding reference. I'm I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so this general vicinity is where I was thinking of trying to plant another outpost, but I think most of this area is covered by the nearby plague heart. Oh wait, it's not this one. Oh, it's the next one up that I actually was thinking of. Never mind, let's go a little further. Get away from me, zombies. Or follow me if you want to get blown up with a plague heart. So, Ranathcord mentions uh, there's a place called Carhenge in, Alli in Alliance, Nebraska. That's one of those kinds of roadside attractions. So yeah, that, that kind of thing, exactly. Okay, so I don't know if I have enough explosives to guarantee that I will kill a plague heart with explosives, but I think it's worth giving it a try. So let's head over here to where the plague heart is. And head inside. Actually, before I do, I think I'm, my phone is getting buzzed. Let me make sure there's no, no kind of emergency going on here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so my daughter's school is having a weird event called Anything But a Backpack Day. And the basic idea is the kids, you don't bring a backpack. Instead, you bring almost anything else to carry your books in. And they're pretty permissive about it. So, like, and some kids aren't even bringing things to carry their books. They're just bringing weird stuff to carry around the school. Um, one kid brought a dog. They just, they're carrying their books around and then they've got a dog on a leash and the dog is not helpful. It's not, it's not a good replacement for a backpack, but they're having fun anyway. Um, but my daughter said that one kid actually brought their bicycle and is riding around with a bicycle with a basket on the front. 
and the basket's got their books in it. They're just riding the bicycle around the school. So I'm going to try to do this quietly for as long as I can. I guess I should have brought a... Uh, a thing. Oh, I just heard a freaking monster. There we go. A juggernaut? I don't want a juggernaut. Keep your juggernaut. Okay, okay, so hold on. Let's... Let's fire in the hole. Try to thin him out a little bit. Wow, there's a bunch of hordes around here. Like, what? What's going on? Oh, gosh! Right, I heard that. I did not need to be surprised by that. I knew exactly what was going to happen. That was not the most economical use of bullets. <laughs> but whatever. Okay, I need to hurry this up. Oh, there's another freaking feral? Why is there another feral? And why isn't he coming after me so I can shoot him? He's like lying in wait in here. Or maybe it wasn't a feral. Okay, maybe it was just a guy in a green shirt who looked like a feral to me. Okay. Second tier. Okay, so let's try explosives now. Oh wait, that's not where it is. There, that's where it is. Oh crap, not that. No, I, sorry, I forgot that was my fire. Crap! Dang it, I accidentally threw fire instead of a grenade. Ah! What the, get away from me. Oh, of course I need to reload. Ah, oh, come on. Ugh, that was foolishness. Okay, well, luckily I've got enough play cards still left. I can still make up for that. But, but, that wasn't the only thing I was trying to do. I also wanted to claim an outpost here. So, even though I failed to do the bounty, I can still claim an outpost. Still accomplish some of my objectives. So, Coalition, I'm not sure why I'm not sure why you get fixated sometimes on specific things you want me to do. Like you're really focused on bloater gas right now, and I'm not sure why. I mean, it's fine. But so yeah, Coalition is reminding me that it, bloater gas probably counts as explosives, and I could have used that. I guess so, but you know. Oh wait a minute, Coalition is suggesting a police station. Is south of the what? I forgot where the police station is right here. Is this a police station? And that will give me ammo, right? I do like ammo, but I also do like... I do also like fuel. The question is... there. I think there might be fuel down here. There might be fuel down here, and I do need one in that area too. So... Maybe... Maybe the police station would be better. Let's, let's go grab the police station. That's fine. We'll grab the police station, and then actually we'll start heading back home. Cog says Crocker's Corner is good for ammo. Uh, you're talking like um, anyone should know what the names of our neighborhoods are. Um, <laughs> which is actually... What am, I what am I doing? I passed it up, didn't I? Um, like, we show you the names of your neighborhoods as you're driving into them. We don't give you any more tools than that to actually remember which, which neighborhood is which. Which is... Silly, we actually kind of, I think, originally intended for the neighborhoods to be more important. And then we didn't make them more important, and so we never put the effort into making them more identifiable. But yeah, this seems like a good place. What? I hear a zombie. Here's one. We got so many rooms to go in. So many rooms. My character's getting tired. The coffee's worn off. And actually, I've been 
been doing this for a while, so I should probably end the episode sometime soon. This is a big container of gun, though. Or something, anyway. Alright. These rooms down here. Uh, I always lose those, like, those near misses with zombies where we're both attacking at the same time. They always hit me first, it feels like. Alright, we'll claim this. Wait, this... Yeah, it definitely includes ammo collection. Cool. Let's drop off stuff I don't need. And I'll worry about cleaning up all the details later. Scavenging all of the stuff. Cleaning up the plague husks. You know, all that, all that kind of thing. I'll worry about that later. I'm kind of in a rush to get this guy home, so... So yeah, let's see. So we should upgrade our ammo outposts. I would still like to get at least one fuel outpost. Let's drive down through here and scout around. It might actually be worth killing one more plague heart on our way back home. And see how nonchalantly I talk about killing plague hearts? It's like, after getting used to Nightmare... Playing in dread is 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 not that intimidating. I mean, I I was potentially getting in trouble with that uh, feral that was chasing me and, and and stuff like that. But I just wasn't nearly as scared uh, as I would be if that had been in nightmare. All right. By the way, I'm sorry if I've been. I'm a little bit tired today. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. And so I'm sorry if I've been uh, more un unattentive than usual uh, to the chat. I feel like I am kind of. Uh... Oh, yeah, here's another ammo outpost. <laughs> this is prob this is probably the spot that uh, Cogs was talking about. It's weird seeing the green bloaters. Like I'm just so used to nightmare with the red, much more dangerous bloaters. All right. So I don't have fire anymore. So I got to try to make quick work of this thing. I, as the population increases, I'm going to have less options. Oh, crap. Okay, cool. I just barely canceled that grenade in time. Because I, as usual, I was pushing RB to jump, because that's what you do in Dying Light 2. Alright, so I think still has one more phase. Let's see if this is enough to blow it up. That one wasn't, but maybe the next one it will be? Yes! Got it. Oh, I heard a... Yeah, there's a bloater. <laughs> oh, so many plague samples to pick up. Ooh, and some meds, and some gas, and more plague samples. I'll worry about the rest of this later. Let's grab all the plague samples. So now that I've taken out this plague heart, much more effectively than the last one, and notice I got credit for destroying it with explosives, because I wasn't an absolute fool this time. Um... I can... Yeah, I'm getting closer with the bounty. I can go claim this ammo outpost. This will be great. <laughs> so Coalition points out that, you know, if I actually started playing the game in lethal more often, then Nightmare would start to feel like Green Zone to me. Uh, probably so. Right now, all I do in lethal is fail, so I can't really establish a set of habits around playing lethal because all I do is die. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree that probably, I mean, for a while, you know, Dread was felt a little bit too hard for me sometimes. And so, and now that Dread feels good, yeah, I can totally see that effect working at other levels. Okay, so I am exhausted now. It is time to get this character home. We have not quite claimed 
all of the outposts we can, but we've made really good headway on it. And I'm just going to max out all of these guys. I am running low on uh, influence, but that's okay. We need to get this character home. Though, actually, I do want to go on that mission over there. And I don't have to go home to swap characters. So maybe what I should really do is end the episode right here. Switch characters. Uh, and then we'll do another episode of me, you know, maybe claiming another couple outposts, but mostly trying to go on some missions uh, to maybe get my make some progress towards getting some allies. So I think that's what we're going to do. So let me check on the chat real quick just to make sure uh, I'm not missing anything super critical here. <laughs> oh, so Lacolisium pointed out much earlier on that Cascade Hills has two outpost claimable p police stations, but Meager Valley has none. Uh, yeah, and actually that means that Meager Valley can't have the, uh, the Eagle Eye mission because the Eagle Eye mission requires you to go to a police station. And that's an area where we just, we didn't really coordinate very well between different parts of the team on State of Decay 2, uh, where, you know, the world builders, you know, were, were building the worlds lar largely thinking about the aesthetic experience of driving around, exploring the space, you know, thinking about, like, what it will look and feel like to be in this world. Um, and on the systems design side, we were planning, you know, okay, you know, here are our loot quotas, here are, you know, and, and we had, you know, mission designers designing missions, but there wasn't enough communication and collaboration across those those sort of between those different silos of people, which means that we ended up with, with um, mis entire maps that couldn't support certain missions because they didn't have certain buildings or places where we had to sort of like you've noticed that, that there's some of there are some sheds that have like a, a deer's head on the door and that have a lot of ammo inside of them whereas most sheds are, are largely focused on materials we added those because we didn't have enough sources of ammo on the map we didn't plan ahead uh between the world builders and the systems designers to make sure that the world was supporting all of the resources that the systems needed so that so there was a lot of places where we had to make sort of last minute corrections or just accept limits to the game because we didn't collaborate well enough. So that's something like in the future we're trying to do a lot more of like making sure that we're breaking down those silos and getting the right people into the right rooms together uh, to to make sure that we're thinking of everything when we're planning this stuff because it's it's it it seems obvious once you say it but it's it's a thing that's when you're just your head down heads down focused on the work it's really easy to miss that kind of thing. Dougie Fresh said, I'd love to see you team up with some other Undead Labs people in Lethal. Uh, maybe one of these days. I mean, you do see me do that on the official State of Decay 2 streams sometimes. Uh, you know, have me, you see me playing with Joe and Brant and stuff like that in, in Lethal Zone. In my in my own uh, games, I don't I tend not to play uh, co-op and stuff uh, during my own streams. Uh, just because this is where I sort of relax and get to hang out with you folks. And the stresses of trying to be entertaining with another person are a little bit tougher. My kids are about as much as I can manage a lot of the time. Oh, Cogs is wondering if I care about having a stranger at the door. Uh, I care a little bit. Um, I think I am planning still on still headed back home at some point. I just wanted to help the ring bearers first. Hmm. Oh, interesting. So Liam the Blob asks a question that I should take on in the next episode. So let's let's wrap this thing up. Uh, Here's a subscribe button for people who watch later on YouTube. And uh, I'll put a link to the next video that I make right here. It's the one I'm going to move on to right now. So if you're watching me live, stick with me and we're going to play some more State of Decay 2.